Good morning. Today we start chapter 13. Chapter 13 is called Periodic Functions and Trigonometry. We're going to be doing a lot of trigonometry. Probably the first time you'll be seeing this, unless maybe you uh, remember some of it from geometry. We'll find out. So we're going to start with section 13.1, which is periodic functions. I'm pretty sure every single one of you has had some sort of dealing with a periodic function, most likely in one of your science classes. The objective is to identify cycles and periods of periodic functions, find amplitudes and midlines. Just to give you a definition, periodic function is a function that repeats a pattern of y values at regular intervals. A cycle is one completion of the pattern. The period is the horizontal length of one cycle. And periodic behavior is behavior that repeats over intervals of a constant length. I zoomed in on this function so you can see. Now pretend this function was continuing in both directions because to be honest with you, that's what it needs to do to be considered a periodic function. And I want to just point out the pattern. If I start here, I go up, down, below the x-axis, and back up. That would be considered one cycle. Now maybe you visualized it different. Maybe you thought it starts here, goes down, touches the x-axis, comes up, and goes down again. That's another cycle. It's still going through the same amount of numbers horizontally. So the period is the horizontal length of one cycle. So if you look at what I did in blue, then it starts here, it ends here at four. So the period would be four because that's how long it took for the pattern to take. Now, had I started in the pink, that I started at two, ended my pattern at six, well, six minus two is four. So no matter how I'm looking at the cycle, the period of this periodic function is four. Okay, so now we're just going to take a look at three different periodic functions. And for now, all we're going to do is identify one cycle and find the period. Okay, so you may visualize this different than me, but I kind of see a cycle here as starting at the bottom, coming up, and then going back down. And notice that same pattern repeats over and over again. So I've identified one cycle. Now the question is, what is the period of my cycle? And that is the horizontal distance. So if I start here, that would be one, two, three, four. The period of this periodic function would be four. This next periodic function is probably something that you've seen before. And depending on how you view the cycle, I'm looking at as we start here at the bottom, we go up and then back down again. So in my eyes, that would be one cycle. The period of this one particular cycle, if it starts at zero and ends at five, that means the period is five. This third one looks like uh, some sort of medical type of thing, but this, here's how I'm looking at it. If I start here, That is one cycle because then that same pattern repeats again. Now, what would we consider the period for that function? Well, if this is 10 here, then that means it stopped at 11 and it started at, let's see, 1, 2, 3. So 11 minus 3 tells me that this function has a period of 8. There are two other properties of periodic functions that we're going to discuss, and one is called the midline. What the midline is is the horizontal line midway between the maximum and minimum value. So you take the maximum value, add it to the minimum value, and either multiply that by one half or divide by two, and your midline will be y equals whatever that number is. The other thing is the amplitude. The amplitude is half the difference between the maximum and the minimum values of the function. I always think of the amplitude as the height of the function from that midline. But if you wanted to put a formula to it, it's max minus min, and then you either multiply it by one half, 
or divide by two. And that's what we're gonna go back now through these three periodic functions and find the midline and amplitude. So remember, the midline is half of the value of the max plus the min. So the max y value here is two, the min is negative one. Two plus negative one. So that two plus negative one is one, and half of one is a half. So the midline, and again, it's a horizontal line, so we have to write it as an equation, would be y equals one half. Now, I'm going to draw that on here so you can see it. I've drawn it just so you can see. I mean, it's a midline. It's in the middle of the highest and lowest values. Now let's talk about the amplitude of this particular periodic function. Now remember, the formula for amplitude is 1 half times the max, which we said was 2, minus the min. So if I'm doing minus minus 1, we know that that is plus 1. So I really have half of 3. What is half of 3? 1.5. Now the amplitude doesn't have an equation, it's just a number. The amplitude of this periodic function is 1.5. And you can actually see that on the graph. Go to the midline. How far is it to the lowest point here? It's a half plus one or one and a half. How far is it from the highest point? A half plus one, one and a half. So the amplitude is kind of like the height from the midline. That's how I like to view it. But the formulas will always work if you want to use those. The midline for this next one, again, the formula is one half of the max. In this case, the max is five plus the min. The min in this case is one. And five plus one is six and half of six is three. But remember, it's a horizontal line. So we have to write it as an equation y equals 3, and I'm actually going to draw that in. It's not necessary to draw it in. I just like it because it gives me a visual. Now I see, hey, that line is in the middle of my periodic function. Now, to find the amplitude, it is 1 half the max, which is 5, minus the min. So 5 minus 1 is 4. Half of 4 is 2. So the amplitude of this periodic function is 2. And if you look, that makes a lot of sense. From this line to here is 2. From this line to the lowest point is 2. And therefore, that is the amplitude of our periodic function. And now the crazy weird one. Midline. Half of the max. The max in this particular graph is 5 plus the min. The min in this particular graph is 1. So we have, uh, again, 1 half of 6. That is 3. That means the line y equals 3 is the midline for this graph. And once again, I'm going to draw that midline just because I like to see it. And there it is. And it seems a little weird here because it actually, the midline is touching part of our graph, but that's okay. We're still able to calculate the amplitude. Again, the formula for amplitude is the max minus the min. And look at that. We've got the same amplitude as in the previous graph, even though they're completely different. Now, the reason this still works is look. From this line to the lowest point is 1, 2. From this line to the highest point is 1, 2. And also over here again from the lowest point is 1, 2. So I know that that answer for the amplitude of 2 is correct. And now we have to get a little creative. We want to draw a function that has a period of 3, an amplitude of 4, and a midline of y equals 1. So I think I'm going to start by putting in that midline of y equals 1. All right, now remember, if it has an amplitude of 4, that's how high the high points are from that line and how low the low points are. So we could go as high as here, right? Or as low as 1, 2, 3, 4 to achieve an amplitude. But we also have to keep in mind that we need a period of 3. 
So we need a pattern that's going to repeat itself every three. I'm pretty sure we can accomplish this by just moving this dot one, two, three, and maybe this one. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Remember, periodic, it keeps happening. One, two, three, one, two, three. I could even go in this direction. One, two, three, in this direction, one, two, three. And I just set up arbitrary points. I didn't have to start them there. It just worked out for me. So I'm gonna go like this and connect it. Uh, probably would have been smart had I used a ruler because it's not gonna look that great, but too late now. All right, so since it's periodic, it's gonna go on forever and ever. I'm tired of drawing, so I am gonna put arrows at each end indicating that it's going on and on forever. Now let's just double check everything. The period is three, and let's check out one cycle and see if that actually occurs in three. Doesn't matter what cycle I pick, but we've got that pattern occurring within three. Now, if we wanted to check the midline, we have a formula. So the midline formula is one half, the max, which in my case was one, two, three, four, five, plus the min, which in my case was one, two, three, negative three. We have um, five plus negative three is two, and let's see, I think I messed something up here. Oh, no, I didn't. Silly me. Five plus negative three is two. Half of two is one. And there we have it. Y equals one, which is what we had. And then for the amplitude, just to double check, I drew that correctly. It's the max minus the min. That would give me eight, and half of eight is four. So my graph is correct, and, and there are so many more graphs we could have made. This one just happens to work with the given information. All right, we're gonna do another one. This one we want to have a midline of y equals negative one, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do is draw that in. Now, if my amplitude's 2.5, that means the highest point is two and a half above that line. So let's go uh, one, two, and a half. And if the period is six, that point's gonna repeat every six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I do need a bottom part here. Remember, if the amplitude's 2.5, then at some point here, and maybe I'll go halfway between because that kind of makes sense, and it doesn't matter, I'm going to go down one, two, and a half, put my low point here, and then I'm going to count six. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six this way, and one, two, three, four, five, six that way, one, two, three, four, five, six, that way and now I'm going to take a minute I think I'm going to make this one curvy I'm going to take a minute to draw my graph and it would look something like this and I can check everything I can check the midline is actually negative one by using my formula remember that formula is one half the max which in this case was one and a half plus the min which in this case is at one two, three, negative three and a half. So let's see, uh, that would give me a negative two and half of negative two is negative one. So, so far so good. And for the amplitude, same formula, but we have one half of 1.5 minus minus 3.5. So that's gonna become a plus. 3.545, half of five is 2.5, and that's what the amplitude I was supposed to have, and then I can check the period 
by just making sure that one cycle of this graph goes through six horizontal values. We started here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we are good to go. All right, your assignment, and this assignment you can do today or tomorrow for it's not due until 11.59, before 11.59 on Tuesday, May 5th. For the first six problems, you're going to do what I did in our first example. You're going to identify one cycle, somehow highlighter, darken it, however you can do it. And then I also want you to state the period, the midline, and the amplitude. Remember, the midline is an equation, so make sure yours says y equals whatever your answer is. The last two problems of this assignment are just like the two that we just did, okay? So have a great couple of days, and I'll talk to you on Wednesday.